Please join me in welcoming Madam Secretary Betsy DeVos to the podium. Thank you so much, Scott and uh, Bernard. Bernard. Um, it's really a pleasure to be here with you this afternoon, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed a good lunch. Does anyone feel a need to maybe get up and stretch a moment? Um, I'm going to make just a few comments, and then uh, Scott and I are going to have a conversation, which I think will be a lot more interesting than me speaking for too long. But I, I really am pleased to be with you and to share your focus on American economic prosperity and leadership. Our economy is the strongest it's been in years. Wages are growing, unemployment shrinking for everyone. Small businesses are opening at record numbers. Our economy is fa expanding faster than anyone had predicted. As I said, I'm really looking forward to talking about uh, education as a lifelong um, pursuit with Scott in a moment. But, but before we do that, I want to make one thing really clear. I believe American higher education is the envy of the world. And in order to keep it that way, there are a few challenges that need to be met head on. Right now, there are more than 7 million unfilled jobs in the United States, and more than 80% of HR professionals say they've had difficulty find, finding qualified people for open positions. Employers can't find enough qualified people to hire because often there are too many disconnects between education and the economy. And it all starts with K-12 education. Too many students are unprepared. Only about half of America's high school students took the ACT college entrance exam this year. And of those, only a quarter of them were deemed college ready in multiple subjects. One in four. America's antiquated approach to education <coughs> fails too many students. What we really need is a transformational change in K-12 education. That's why I'm very excited about our Education Freedom Scholarships proposal. I hope you've seen it. It's a $5 billion annual federal income tax credit for voluntary contributions to 501c3 nonprofit organizations that will provide scholarships to students. It's really about unleashing thousands of not yet imagined ways for students to learn. Another way we're empowering students is by getting government out of the way of new and innovative approaches to education. We reject the idea that one-size-fits-all education solutions have any place in today's world, a dynamic, iterating global economy. There should be many education pathways because there are many types of students with many different interests and many kinds of opportunities with varying requirements. We know there are fewer traditional students in higher education today, so higher ed needs to be more responsive to all students. As we've done with all of our, our reforms, we ask why we do things, how we do things, and how might they be done better. And I know we'll talk about that more, more in a moment, so I'll just say that our higher ed reforms are necessary and timely. We're expanding apprenticeship and dual enrollment opportunities. We're reforming accreditation to encourage different approaches to higher education. We're opening up the federal work-study program to include opportunities actually useful to students' careers. We restored year-round Pell funding so students can learn when it works for them. Additionally, we are championing short-term Pell and second-chance Pell to serve more kinds of students. We're transforming federal student aid by modernizing every aspect of how it's run and every aspect of customer experience. We started by putting the FAFSA form on our My Student Aid app. We're adding relevant information for students to keep track of their loans in real-time basis. We also updated the college scorecard to make information about higher ed in institutions actually useful for students to make informed decisions. We reached historic consensus on reforms to distance education, competency-based education, credit hours, religious liberty, and more. These are just some of the things we're doing to encourage innovation and to expand freedom in education. But ultimately, employers must be part of the solution. So let me say this to business leaders. Don't wait for Washington 
Don't wait for your state. Instead of calling a legislator, visit an educator. Students need more partnerships between education and you. Employers also need to rethink some of their own practices. For instance, I mentioned earlier that more than 80% of HR professionals can't find qualified people. Well, how are we defining qualified? More businesses need to make sure job postings actually reflect the requirements of the position instead of automatically inflating the description to require degrees when they're not really necessary. We need to spend less time insisting that traditional, expensive four-year college degrees are the avenue to success, and more time talking about the dignity of all education pathways. Ultimately, we need to encourage and celebrate many options for students of all ages. The result will be a workforce and a nation capable of conquering any challenge and seizing any opportunity.